What you see on the screen is the network analyzer of the analog discovery. You've seen this before if you've watched my videos on uh, the analog discovery. What I'm doing here is I'm going to do a little short update on the use of the audio analyzer suite. Uh, you may recall that a, a few weeks ago I published a uh, video on that. And the, one of the reasons that I wanted to do this update is because the author of that uh, software, that is the Audio Analyzer Suite, his name is Jake uh, at the Stuff Made, has uh, issued an update. And in part, uh, I think one of the reasons that he did the update is when I originally did the uh, analysis of the of his software using with the analog discovery, he had asked if uh, I had any suggestions, and I gave him some suggestions, and he appears to have incorporated those suggestions, so I feel a little bit responsible for, for this update. Uh, I don't want to take any credit for it. I, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, if, if I steered him in a wrong direction, then that's my fault. But he's a great guy to work with, and he sent me an email uh, a couple of days ago uh, saying that he had published the update and wondered if I'd had a chance to look at it, and I had not. So I downloaded the updated version, and I've been playing with it a little bit this uh, weekend. The thing that you see on the screen is the uh, network analyzer analyzing the Class A amplifier that uh, I have done some other videos on. It's just a basically a experimental stage just to give us something to work with. On the left is uh, the frequency is 10 kilohertz. I'm sorry, 10 hertz. And on the right is 50 kilohertz. And what you're seeing here is the uh, frequency response, that is the gain. This particular amplifier has about 20 dB of gain. And the phase response. Notice that uh, it starts out around 216 degrees of phase, comes down to 180 degrees. It's an inverting amplifier. So it remains at about 180 until it gets out in this region, at which time the phase begins to fall to around 140 or so degrees at the 50 kilohertz uh, upper limit. Now, for those of you that may wonder, I've deliberately limited the upper frequency response of this stage. It actually goes out into the uh, megahertz, uh, several megahertz range. In fact, I think it goes out to about three to four megahertz. But I've put a capacitor in the output to cause it, uh, the output to roll off at a frequency that is comparable to what an audio amplifier would do. And that's really where, where I'm going with this. So I'm going to switch over to the audio analyzer suite and show you how that works. I've switched over now to the audio analyzer suite. Once again, as I've pointed out, this is from a, a, an author. His name is Jake. Um, it's at the Stuff Made website. You can also find some YouTube videos on this. This is the updated version. If you watched the, the uh, review of the Audio Analyzer Suite and the experiments I did a few, uh, I guess a month or so ago, the, uh, this was a uh, different program. And I'll point out just a couple of changes that he has made. You'll notice up here, you can now select the channel. One reason that I suggested that he do that is because he, the way he used the analog discovery was he was using channel 1 as the input for the gain and phase measurements and using the output of the wave generator to do the uh, the reference. If that's confusing, what, what I'm getting at is he had channel 1 hooked to the output of the amplifier. The network analyzer for the analog discovery in the waveform software, in other words, in the software published by Digilent, their network analyzer uses channel 2. 
to connect to the output of the amplifier and uses channel 1 to monitor the input. I suggested that he provide a way to select uh, the channels here, and he has certainly done that. He, he's been just great in uh, in responding to these things, and so I was really happy to see that because what that means is you do not have to change the wiring configuration to move back and forth between the waveform software and the audio analyzer suite. The connections are the same for both. So now what I'm doing is I'm running the frequency response of that same amplifier using the audio analyzer suite, and you see it's roughly the same. The over here you'll see that it gives you uh, a gain value and how much that gain is off for the uh, this trace, but this trace of course is, uh, is not being used. And then channel 2 I'm using for the uh, output of the amplifier. So this of course uh, down here has, uh, is basically an open signal. This is the actual output of the amplifier up here. So these figures don't really matter, but these over here do. You notice that there is a figure for, for how far down it is in dB, and then relative to the maximum dB. In this case, he is saying that the uh, maximum dB is about 17.98, and that's probably about right for this amplifier. As I said, it's around 20 dB. So here in the center, you see that we're only down about 0.01 dB out of uh, 19.88 total. And one nice thing about this is it allows you to read across the actual figure. That is the actual gain that you're getting relative to the max gain. And it also gives you the frequency over here that you're, that you're working with. So for example, at this point, the frequency is 2604 hertz. There are a number of other things that he has uh, included in this suite. These are pretty much what used to be there, the same ones. But uh, let me show you the circuit that I'm using. And then I think what I'm going to do is uh, probably wrap this up for right now because the intent is mainly to just tell you about this update and suggest that if you were inspired to do some audio analyzing of your amplifiers from one of my previous videos, then you might want to consider downloading this new version of the Analyzer Suite. It's got some pretty neat improvements. Another one that I suggested was that he allow uh, a limit on the power when you do the harmonic distortion versus power that you limit the amount of power that you're going to generate. He appears to have incorporated that as well. So, uh, well, uh, without too much more blathering on, I'll uh, move over and show you the circuit that I'm working on and then a few closing thoughts. This is the circuit that I'm working with. If you watched the videos I did on Class A amplifiers, you'll recognize it. It's just simply a 3904 NPN transistor biased for Class A operation with an output and input coupling capacitor and an, uh, a, an unbypassed emitter resistor. It has a gain which is approximately the ratio of this resistor to this resistor. In other words, 1000 to 100 or a gain of about 10, which is 20 dB. The Analog Discovery that I'm using right now is this one. It's the original Analog Discovery. But I have tested this with the new Analog Discovery 2. And it works, that is the Audio Analyzer Suite, works equally well with that. And the tests that I've been doing on the uh, Analyzer Suite indicate that it is uh, uh, no new problems and some new features. So, uh, in other words, all positive news. It's actually a day or so later than when I did that original video, uh, the part that you've seen already. 
And the reason is it's now uh, Sunday and I have just finished watching a couple of videos by Blue Glow, uh, Blue Glow Electronics. He has adopted the analog discovery as a project to work with the audio analyzer suite and I suggest that if you haven't already go over to his channel and take a look at some of those videos and by the way uh, I want to uh, thank him for mentioning uh, my earlier videos on this subject one reason that I'm doing this now is the uh, I'm substituting it for the little follow-up that I did a few days ago to that earlier video and the reason is that I feel like where he is going with this is something that I wish that I uh, wanted to do, but I really, it's not an area that uh, I guess I would say it's not a real area of interest for me anymore, but it is obviously something that he's big on. The What you see here is a, a diagram of uh, a setup that he has put together to use the analog discovery and the audio analyzer suite to do some audio testing. He uh, this morning uploaded uh, I think part four and and I think uh, part three he must have uploaded sometime yesterday that is on Saturday. But at any rate where he's going with this is uh, exactly where I would like to take it but given that I do not have and don't want to acquire the tube amplifiers and other equipment necessary to really do that kind of a project justice combined with the fact that while I once was big into amplifiers and amplifier testing and things of that sort, high fidelity and uh, stereo, these days I'm more into communications and electronic communications and anyway other areas. So I really feel like that he is uh, much better positioned to carry this kind of project forward. So I'm going to actually make this my last video on this subject, but I recommend that you follow his progress with the use of, uh, that is Blue Glow Electronics Progress, and keep up with the website called The Stuff Made, because Jake is working on these things constantly as well, and he may produce some yet further software that does some additional features, for example, measuring hum and noise and things that you may have noticed in one of the videos I did on the, the Sencor PA81. I talked about measuring hum and noise and uh, other things that uh, I don't think anyone has yet done with the analog discovery. So, to wrap all this up, I think the analog discovery, either the original or the, the new analog discovery too, is an excellent tool. It works really well for doing audio analysis, among many other things. I'd like to close by uh, thanking Boogaloo Electronics for his interest in using the analog discovery in these audio analyzer applications, and uh, a special shout out to Jake, the author of the Audio Analyzer Suite, for his work on this and his recently published update. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing how this uh, project and the general use of the analog discovery goes in the future, and I'm also looking forward to maybe using it a little bit myself, but not perhaps enough to justify continuing this as a video series. So, best of luck to everybody, and everybody have a nice day.